hybrid encryption is a multi-step process and the example we will have a look at and which I will demonstrate later on how to implement in Python will make use of AES as the symmetric encryption scheme and RSA as the asymmetric encryption scheme. In order to make use of such a hybrid encryption system, a receiver of hybrid encrypted data first needs to have a public and private RSA key pair generated for the purpose of the encryption of the data. The public key of this key pair needs to be made publicly available to allow senders of data to hybrid encrypt this data such that only the receiver and owner of the public private key pair can decrypt it. Then, a sender that wants to hybrid encrypt data for the recipient first needs to create a new random symmetric key and then uses this key to encrypt the plaintext with AES into a ciphertext. In a second step, the sender takes the public key of the recipient and uses this public key to encrypt the symmetric key with RSA. The sender then sends both the ciphertext as well as the encrypted symmetric key to the recipient. The recipient then in a first step has to decrypt the received encrypted symmetric key with its private key in order to recover the symmetric key used by the sender. With this recovered symmetric key, the receiver can then decrypt the received ciphertext with AES to recover the original plaintext. This is cool. So let me demonstrate how to implement this in Python. The driver of the hybrid encryption implementation is a straightforward translation of the steps required in a hybrid encryption from theory into Python. A recipient with a public-private RSA key is required, with the corresponding public key to then be made publicly available. Then, a plaintext is required, which is hybrid encrypted under just the knowledge of the recipient's public key, which results in a ciphertext and an encrypted symmetric key. The hybrid encryption function I first left unimplemented to proceed with the driver and to outline that a hybrid decryption is then required to recover the plaintext. The hybrid decryption requires the ciphertext, the cipher key and the private key of the recipient. Once both the hybrid encryption function and the hybrid decryption function are implemented, the recovered plaintext then needs to be the original plaintext, which I checked with this last assertion statement. Going into the implementation of the hybrid encryption, I first outlined the steps required, which is to symmetrically encrypt the plaintext with AES and then to encrypt the AES key with RSA. For the encryption of the plaintext with AES, the plaintext needs to be padded, a key for AES needs to be generated, as well as an initialization vector, as the encryption will take place with the CPC mode of operation. For the padding of the plaintext, 
I took the PKCS7 padding. The key for AES I generated as a completely fresh and random 256-bit key. And the IV for CBC I randomly sampled as well. With all of this, the plain text could then be encrypted into a ciphertext. For the encryption of the AES key with RSA, the OAEP padding was required, and with this OAEP padding, the AES key could then be encrypted with RSA by making use of the recipient's public key. As this is a hybrid encryption system, both the ciphertext and the encrypted key could then be returned, but given that the CBC mode of operation was used, also the IV was required to be transmitted. It's absolutely fine to not encrypt the IV, as the IV is not meant to be kept secret in the first place. The hybrid decryption then first required to recover the AES key by decrypting the encrypted key with the private key of the recipient. Once this AES key was available, the ciphertext could be decrypted back into the plaintext with all that was left to do was to remove the PKCS7 padding from the plaintext.
Once this was implemented, the driver successfully executed a full cycle of this RSA AES hybrid encryption scheme.